What's going on guys, still here. This is part two of the CDK tutorial. We're still here on Afghanistan and we're at Bagram Air Force Base with the units we had left over from the first video. What I'm gonna do today is I'm going to show you everything that you need to know to make a very, very basic working multiplayer mission. And I'm gonna show you how to, excuse me, Windows, thank you very much for the interruption. Go away. Sorry about that, but I'm going to show you how to save a, a mission and how to get it all working properly. I've got a few tips and tricks to um, help you test the mission, and I'm going to link in the description at the top, I'm going to link a part of the CDK wiki that has all of the triggers, variables, all this, all these, basically these little tool tips um, that you're going to be referring to for a very long time. Um, until you get down what what each trigger and whatever it does. Um, and you're going to have to refer to that a lot for a long time. Um, sadly, it is very vague on some things. Other things, it's pretty straightforward. Some things, I don't even know what they do. Which is why I'm not going to go over those things, possibly ever. And we don't even need to worry about that right now. We're just going to get into it. So, on the right side, you'll see Properties. We're going to go into this, and I sadly can't drag it. Come on. Whatever. All right, we'll leave it there. So the first thing you're going to see at the top is mission settings. So you're going to want to set a couple of these things in order, in order for it to work. You've got the atmosphere, um, which you don't really need, which sets barometric pressure and temperature and Celsius, I believe. But we don't really need to do that. You can do that if you want to basically set the pressure for... Um, aircraft being able to fly a certain i think the pressure changes depending on the map i think it already kind of defaulted in but i'm not sure we've got player underscore team a and player underscore team b this is where you're going to set up your wings aka basically your player slots and for some reason maybe i'm just doing it wrong but they don't correspond to the appropriate amount of slots that you that you think you'll have and it's just kind of weird, but I do a certain number, which is 15, I believe it is, on each team, uh, which is a total of 30, which should should be 30 players, 15 on each team, but I don't I don't think it translates. It might do 14 or 13, whatever. It doesn't matter. So below that, we have LOC name, which is location name, and location description. So I already named it Afghanistan Tutorial and lo location description, basic guide to making missions for multiplayer in War Thunder. Type, you have campaign, training, single mission, event, tournament, team battle, domination, dynamic, test flight, benchmark, credits, and skirmish. So basically, when there's those little cutscenes, if you play the dynamic campaign, that's what I believe credits is for and, and stuff like that. There's the benchmark and stuff, obviously. The one that I always set it to is team battle. You can set it to domination. Uh, I don't think it really matters. Um, but if you're going to do domination, I believe this means airfield domination, not tank domination. There's some different stuff in there, but I just always do team battle. It's it's much easier. Also, whatever map you want to play, the level is what you want to set to. So you want to make sure that, for this instance, the level Afghanistan is set over here to the level Afghanistan. If it's set to Denmark, even though I'm editing a mission on what you can see is clearly Afghanistan, it's going to end up on Denmark. So you want the level bin to actually be the map that you're editing on. Game type parameters, you've got tickets, capture, solo, cooperative, reload explosives, free for all, free for all deathmatch, race, football, last man standing, MP score, and versus. The only one I ever do is tickets because that's all you need is tickets. You can pretty much do a lot of basic functions um, without touching any of these other ones. Reload explosives is, is like tied to a trigger, which if you've played those, um, those weird custom battles where everyone's running around with, with unlimited ammo and stuff, that's, that's what that is. But, uh, I have never messed with it, so take what I say with a pinch of salt. <laughs> but yeah, all you want is game type tickets, really. Common parameters is limited fuel, is limited ammo. If you have these two checked here, no matter what you change in the custom battle settings, you will have limited fuel and ammo. You could put it to unlimited in-game, and it's still going to give you limited. Open different levels. I don't know what that does. I'm not touching that. 
versus parameters, you've got a lot of stuff here. So you've got score limit, so 5,000 tickets, time limit, 20 minutes, death penalty multiplier. Basically, if you die, you your death counts as 500 tickets. So 0 0.1, or sorry, 0 0.5 is 500. If you put it to straight up 5, it's going to be 5,000. So <laughs> just be careful of that. Post fix, I've never touched. Capture zone equal penalty multiplier. These I've kind of messed with. These are some cap zone related ticket bleed and um, and I don't currently remember what they're doing right now and I think I may not have gotten them to work but I think you use this um, for like the capture uh, basically the ticket bleed when you own a point I think is what it is but I haven't touched it in, in a mission or two alternative map coordinates I've never touched don't know what that is don't bother with it Kill streaks is basically the arcade tank battles of you kill get get kills you spawn into an airplane. Random spawn teams, um, I believe, is basically everyone spawns in random unmarked slots, kind of like what the the battle royale mode it was. Again, don't quote me on that. Tank AI models I've never touched. Is bots allowed? Leave this removed, like just like this. Don't touch this because I thought is bots allowed ticked on would allow bots. However. For some reason, it breaks, doesn't allow you to change it in game, and doesn't put bots in. So just leave leave this like that if you want bots in for testing purposes, obviously, because you're going to be doing a lot of that solo. Tank bots, tank bots. You can change a lot of this stuff in game. Battle area color preset I've never touched. Invulnerable timer I've never touched. Unit types, you basically can just allow airplanes, tanks, ships. That's another in-game function you can do yourself. That works. Custom super artillery. I've never touched that. Max respawns. I've never touched either. Allow MP teams. This is one thing that's really nice. So if AI for whatever reason kill themselves or they kill each other. Basically the game won't end if teams are empty. So this again is another useful thing for if you're playing alone and you want to test your mission. And no one can uh, have the time to help you and sit in custom battles and go in and out of the hangar and stuff like that. So if you want keep this checked on. Mission cost multiplier, I don't remember what that is. I think it might have to do with your spawn. Respawn time multiplier, your respawn time. Spawn score is basically the SP system. This works really weird. I don't have it set up properly, but it basically sets anti-aircraft, aircraft, and helicopters to a, like a 600 spawn point limit. It's really weird. Um, and only like normal tanks can spawn. It's kind of cool, kind of weird. Deathmatch HUD, I've never touched. Tactical map cell size, don't know that either. You can set what countries or which country. You can only set one country per team. I don't use that either. Do that all in game. Um, plus mission is kind of weird. Whoops. Yeah, it's just like another mission parameter. I, I haven't touched this either. Whoops. We have race parameters for races. Football for football slash soccer. Single player parameters, so this is all if you set it to single mission and you basically do it by yourself, optional takeoff, stuff like that. That's for when you're loading into, say, like a test flight. Weather parameters, you have day, you know, for the environment and whatever weather you want. You cannot change the weather in-game no matter what, I'm pretty sure, because even if I have this closed, it's not like an extra option you add. This is like a permanent option that you have to set, which... I kind of don't like because if I set it to night in the mission and I go and I set it to day in game, it's still going to be night or vice versa. So whatever you want for the time period, you do that. If you have to, if you make a mission and you want different uh, time of day or weather settings, you just go back in, you hit save as, and you save it as a different mission with maybe a different uh, weather setting or uh, time of day setting in the file's name. So, but we'll get to that. Um, some other stuff, stars, this is basically all date and time, stuff like that. Custom weather, I've never touched. Wind speed, don't touch wind speed. War Thunder wind doesn't work correctly. Basically, the entirety of Afghanistan is all having wind go in the same direction at the same speed all the time. It's not very useful. It's really stupid. Don't use it in your missions because it sucks. Other parameters or some other random stuff that I've never really used. Tags. Don't use that either. It doesn't seem to work properly. 
spectator points, cover points. You don't really need to worry about this. Units include, I believe you do this in the notepad file if you want to basically limit the mission to certain units, but I've never done that. We have imports, never touched that. Now down here we get to the bread and butter. This is the trigger slash mission objectives area. This is where most of what your mission is going to do is located. I've never touched variables. I've never touched dialogue or speeches or airfields. I've never touched any of this stuff. And I recommend that you don't either until you really, really know what you're doing. And some of you might, if you figure it out, might surpass me <laughs> and, and experiencing uh, with the CDK, but I don't know. I don't bother with it. So for right now, we're going to leave the environment today and the weather to Hey, And now we'll do clear. Leave it clear. Also, this little shadow is really nice. I am going to delete this and this. Okay, so I know this is a really ab uh, abrupt uh, jump, but I'm going to pretty much skip over placing things down um, because I've had to re-record this five times because I basically showed you how to do it wrong five times because, again, I haven't used the CDK in, like, two months. <laughs> so... My apologies. I'm just going to run you through what I did place down and what I have set up so you get this right the first time and not like me where uh, you never get the spawns to work properly. It's a really weird syncing uh, uh, between things and it's really annoying. And again, I'm going to have to uh, suggest that you <laughs> reference the uh, CDK wiki because it's very vague and even still, it's kind of annoying how things match up. So anyways, to make this video a little shorter so I can get into the bread and butter of the next part um, and move this along, I'm going to show you what I did. So I'm going to open this up. This is our mission objectives. And this is where we can modify triggers and mission objectives. So what I have set up is in the events, I have periodic event and init mission for these two. So these are the respawn and runway markings what you do is you plop down two runway spheres one at the beginning of the runway named runway start and one at the end of the runway named runway end you then make the trigger in action or sorry you make a trigger i named it bagram runway markings duh and then you go here you click action and then you have add airfield which is the first option down here, you'll see runway start, runway end, with army, and then spawn points. So, this is how it works. You mark the runway start as runway start, runway end as runway end. I set the width to 20, which is the same as the uh, width of the radius, or the circumference, whatever you want to call it. Um, and I put down four smaller little bubbles that are about uh, 10 meters wide, and... I called them runway spawn 01, 2, or sorry, 02, 03, and 04. You set these to the spawn points. This is where the runway will be recognized as the runway, and this is where aircraft will spawn. Now, the way I did it wrong beforehand is I didn't do this. I forgot that it kind of morphed together under two separate triggers. So, I made another trigger, which I'll call Team a bagram spawn i have it set to periodic event instead of in admission just because that's how it worked out uh no conditions we'll get into conditions in a later episode and actions is what we go to so you hit action and then you type word for word mission mark as respawn it kind of does a keyword thing but you don't have to type the whole thing you can type the whole thing if you want should automatically highlight mission mark as respawn point. You hit that, and it'll add one. So you then set the target as the runway start. You change the location name to background airbase. So when you spawn in, you'll see, you know, say, spawn point one or spawn point two in ground or in Navy spawns like heavy fleet, light fleet, stuff like that. I'd made it background airbase. So aircraft are going to spawn at the airbase. You check mark is airfield. You set the team to A, which is the star team. You go down to tags and you set air, all the air types. I didn't set hydroplane, that would just give it an air spawn. 
carrier takeoff as of note is naval aircraft so any aircraft that is marked naval fighter naval bomber naval attacker whatever it will use that to spawn in so say you have um trying to think of an example say the buccaneer i'm pretty sure the buccaneer will not spawn on an aircraft carrier if you set it to that if you don't check mark this even if it's set to assault which also means attacker so that's what i have set i have helicopter and tanks unchecked mark just to make sure that it is strictly an aircraft spawn uh, I left the boats out because, I mean, you're not going to take a boat in a lineup anyways, and it shouldn't even spawn the boats. You can also set what countries can spawn here as well, but I've never really touched that. One thing to note, which is not really important uh, for this, but we'll get into later, is there is a modular airfield function, which is for the airfields that you can actually place down um, and other stuff like that. But just want to mention that now. Um, I'll mention it again in a later episode, but I'm not going to mess with that right now. So that's pretty much the basics of setting a runway spawn. Basically, you have to have two triggers. One is set up to mark the runway and the points at where you will spawn on the runway. So that's basically what these spawn points mean. Then you actually need to set up the respawn point or basically respawn selection, if you'll call it that, um, which targets the runway start, which then talks to basically this trigger, if you will, into using these spawn points very confusing very vague if you actually don't know what you're doing i've messed up about five times now but hopefully this kind of makes it a little bit shorter and a little bit more thorough and i apologize um, because i basically would have told you guys the wrong thing five different times so this should work for you as well it worked for me it should work for you <laughs> because the cdk is buggy it is vague and sometimes it makes you want to pull your hair out so that is how you set up a on level map designed literally on the map itself airbase so <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna stop there for the airbase part now if you want to play this mission um i'm going to show you how to do that there's a very 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 useful thing that you're going to want to do so um, you're going to want to save the mission by going to mission editor and hitting save mission as you put it in the user missions folder. I made a folder separate called tutorial. So this is how you save a mission. You do not go to project and save the project. Don't do that. I've never touched that and it's it might break your mission. So don't touch that. Just do save mission as and once you're in the mission, obviously save mission. Another thing to note, if I didn't say this already. <laughs> Um, because I've done so many recordings, I'm getting confused. If you don't want to go through the mundane process of setting up spawns for units, so instead of going here and, you know, adding uh, one by one every time, I recommend, I v deeply recommend you set up a template first. So you put in the amount of dummy uh, aircraft and wings, spawns, or whatever you want to call them at, uh, that you want. Then saving that and saving it as like 30 v 30 template or whatever like I have. And then um, loading up with whatever respective level you want to work with. And you and then you save mission as and rename the mission once you started actually making stuff in the mission. Rather than accidentally hitting save mission and then you know maybe screwing up your template or whatever. So that is something I deeply recommend. And also since I have had to re-record a million times what I left out in uh, the previous clip is actually how to have units set up on each team. So what you want to do is, is you want to go make sure you have Armada selected. Then you want to hit Create Unit, like so. You press P to go and view the properties of the object. It defaults to, in alphabetical order obviously, to the A20G. I've never tried it with none, but I think it might work. I haven't tried it, but for now, uh, use the method that I have. You scroll down to the D area and I know that sounds weird but don't take that out of context and you find dummy plane and that's what you do so that's your little dummy plane so now after you have that I set the teams up for these to, as color coded but I also changed the name so team A, team B obviously and then you go up to back into the mission settings you see player team 
A and player team B. Basically, you have to one by one click and correspond the um, dummy unit to a slot in order for you to have enough slots. So theoretically, this should be a six on six slot. You can do 15, it should be 15 v 15, v 15. And obviously, like I just said, it's very mundane. So I do, again, cannot stress this enough, make sure you have a template with some very basic team setup functions and mission settings set so you don't lose your mind. <laughs> like, unfortunately, I have quite a few times. <laughs> so, anyways, on to the next little tidbit. Okay, last little tidbit for this video. So, when you want the mission to actually be able to be played and tested, this is what you do. I personally have a Discord channel, a uh, text channel, for basically what I call it, custom mission link dump. And this is how you actually generate the easiest possible way link in order to test your mission. So, what you do is you go to your mission and its folder. And also, you want to make sure that it is saved. And you want to drag and drop it. Upload it. Right click. Hit copy link. Control V. Then, you want to make sure you get rid of the S in HTTPS to just make it a normal HTTP. You copy that link. And then you go into War Thunder. You go into Add Mission. You then add the title and then Control V into the bottom bar, which will be the link. And you should be able to play your mission. Um, again, I apologize for being so all over the place with these jump cutting, but I'm really crunching for time and um, I don't have time tomorrow uh, in order to get this done. So that's kind of why um, this is kind of going all over the place is simply because I just want to get this to the most straightforward as I can. Okay, now this mission should work. I don't know why, but Afghanistan is taking forever to load. Also, disclaimer, <laughs> custom battles might be a little goofed because we know how buggy War Thunder has been this update. So it might take a minute. But here we are. So we're spawned on one of the little spawn points, like I said. AI should be spawning momentarily. There we go. As you can see, aircraft are spawning. If you look in the top right in the minimap, there is a runway bar and our obviously our allies. And there we go. Okay. <laughs> So, as hectic as this part may have been, I assure you, in the next part, it should be much, much, much smoother. Because, again, I haven't done this method in a while. But, <laughs> I will show you the other method, but in the next episode, we'll be doing it with a helipad. But the rules basically apply to an airfield. So... All right, I am done trying to figure this out for the rest of the day. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I will link everything that you need in the description below. Please share this tutorial um, as, may, as goofed up as it may be. I will try to timestamp this, <laughs> um, considering that it's very out of whack. I was thinking of actually making this a full-on every, like, just one big long hour tutorial. However, I feel like it's better that people consume it in chunks um, rather than, uh, a, you know, a one big video because I feel like that it wouldn't reach as many people due to the algorithms and also it's just much easier for me to have some form of constant content going on um, so the channel doesn't get very stale and the algorithms don't hate me. So again, thank you so much for watching. I'm Steel Wolf and I'll see you guys in the next one.